for last 17 years was zero championships. The 19 years before that, six between these three storied programs. What is up, everybody? It is Jake with Master of Football back at it again. Happy Tuesday. Thank you so much for being here. If you want to be up to date on everything college football, pro football, Madden, EA college football, NFL draft, anything related to American football, hit that red subscribe button. You will not be disappointed. Also hit the like button, too, and follow on Twitter slash X. That fam is growing. Without further ado, let's get into the video. All right, guys, Tuesday, we're a couple days away. We're not quite into Maction yet, but college football season has started. It's it's not going anywhere but forward, baby. We're going. I want to talk about the AP Top 25 because there are three teams that, what's a nice way of saying this, have not had the national championship prowess that they've had in previous seasons in the last couple of years who are starting to make their way kind of back into the rankings. I went over yesterday how, kind of how the SEC is a little bit off to a slow start. Let's go over some teams who are off to a faster start and who are trying to turn around and make themselves national championship contenders. There's three teams. Let's get into those three teams right now. So over here on the AP Top 25, and the AP and the, a the coaches poll is kind of tough because the coaches literally have to like coach, and they're like, oh, yeah, just throw this team on there. A lot of times they might not even see them. But a lot of them, they actually just copy the AP Top 25. We see Georgia at the top, Michigan number two, kind of the same thing we saw last season. Now, number four, Texas, up six spots after their awesome win at Alabama. We see number nine, Notre Dame, 3-0. 3-0 oh, oh is, is what it is. They don't have any conference you know, championship to play, so they are one quarter of the way through their season. And then all the way down here, some orange and some green. But the colors I have in my background, I love Miami colors. I've always have two and oh, up from being not ranked after the big win over Texas A&M. Those three teams, national title contenders in previous seasons, not so much last few years. As a matter of fact, if you come back and check it out here, now there's a little bit of a, take it easy with my math here, but the previous 17 seasons, so we go all the way back here, 2006 up until 2022, these 17 seasons between Texas, Notre Dame, Miami, zero national championships. When you come back down, down here and check this again, from 1987 to 2005, one, two, three, I know it's shared, four, five, six, six national championships in those previous 19 seasons. So for last 17 years was zero championships. The 19 years before that, six between these three storied programs. Now, you got to turn around to get to that point, but these teams are doing that, as we saw with all three of them this last weekend. Now, I know that everybody's going to tout the Texas win at Alabama, and I am too. I actually really think it's awesome, but I've just always been excited for Miami. I've always had a, a, a thing for the swag and this and that. I've, I've, I just love it. When you see your boy Tyler Van Dyke come, Tyler Van Dyke come down here against SEC defenses, think keep that in mind. SEC athletes, twenty-one for 30, 375, 374, five touchdowns, ninety-four point six QBR, absolutely dynamic. And if you watch the game, other than a blocked punt, they were pretty hands down the better team on this day so if you think about that there weren't I mean there was a kick return for touchdown by Miami as well but clearly the better team more dynamic on the outside and you saw the fact that man 374 and five touchdowns against SEC defenses they're not made the same way they used to be anymore but again Miami might be pay, taking up the slack you remember them back in the day they had those dynamic receivers great defensive backs this and that they have all those things now too well they still got to put it together off to a good start 2-0 and on the season and then the big one, the reason why we saw Texas go up multiple spots this last weekend, Texas Longhorns go into Tuscaloosa and beat the Alabama Crimson Tide. You saw here the fact that, what, 2.8 yards per carry on their side, 3.1 on Alabama's side. Both defenses can really shut down the run, but it came down to who can definitely throw through the air. 349, three touchdowns, 24 for 38 on Quinn Ewers. Jalen Milrow kind of struggled in that way. So... Texas, and again, their Xavier Worthy is absolutely a dynamic athlete as well. They've got a lot of guys coming up that are really doing well. A lot of people were picking this team to win the the Big 12 championship on their way out. I and mean, it looks like, man, they're off to a hot start as well. So Texas Longhorns 2-0 with their big non-conference game out of the way. They're getting into conference play pretty soon here, but they are on fire right now. Now, the one right here that's a little mysterious is Notre Dame. So Notre Dame played in Dublin. They won 42-3. or I watched that because that was the first college football game of the season. Tennessee State, whatever. Went to North Carolina State, 45-24. Good win. A good win on the road. Again, they play a lot of ACC teams because they're technically in the conference, just not for football, whatever the hell that's supposed to mean. But you check out here the other games they have coming up. So for them, Central Michigan, they're going to get to 4-0. So they're one-third of the way through the season. They will be undefeated. It is what it is. Now. 
for them, it gets a little bit tricky here. Now, of all these teams here, I think that the most likely to trip up is probably Notre Dame just because their schedule is the most brutal here. Miami has a couple that they have a couple back to back games. They've got about four games. that are going to be pretty tough. And Texas just has big 12 back and forth that we don't know what to expect because there's going to be so many good offenses, so many shootouts, just the way college football is. But Notre Dame, number six, Ohio State. At home, last year they went to Ohio State, had to play, you know, C.J. Stroud. All those guys didn't w pull out the victory this year. Sam Hartman, this team looks pretty good. They've got some good receivers, running backs, offensive lines, great. We'll see how this goes. Ohio State's kind of been, I don't want to say they've been bad, but they've kind of been limping so far this season. Again, they're not as dominant as you would like them to be. Notre Dame's coming in hot, and now Ohio State has to visit Notre Dame. I, man... NBC's going to have themselves a good one here. But if they get past that game, it still doesn't get any easier because the next game is at Duke. And Duke looks pretty solid. At Louisville, we'll see how that goes. Then they host USC. Pitt is actually kind of down and at Clemson. I'm telling you right now, that November 4th game at Clemson, a lot of people are over the fact that, you know, Clemson lost to Duke. Again, throw that out. Okay, that was a weird game with a lot of red zone turnovers. It was a weird situation. I think that Clemson's going to be just fine. They're going to be plenty deadly. Notre Dame needs to take them seriously. And then Wake Forest and, and Stanford, uh, those games, I, I'm not going to consider those right now. But I do know that, that several game stretchables, five games right there, where it's going to be Ohio State, Duke, USC, and Clemson. That's about a six-game stretch, excuse me, with those four ranked teams. One of them on the road, uh, and Clemson on the road as well. I tell you, that is going to be a tough way for them to end that season. But so far, probably going to get to 4-0. One-third of the way through, they're fine. The next one here is Miami, and I think also for them, I think they're going to get to 5-0 pretty easy. Now, they do have to play, you know, bethune cook but on a short week. Well, I'm sure they're going to be fine. At Temple's one of those ones. If, if Miami is serious, they have to win at Temple, okay? They, they should be fine to beat Georgia Tech at home, but they have to win at Temple. Again, they showed out for Texas A&M. Will they show out for Georgia Tech at home? Will they show out for Virginia at home? Will they show out for Louisville at home? Those are some big question marks. Also, if you check this schedule right here, three of the last four games are on the road. I know that Boston College isn't great. Florida State is. NC State's pretty solid, at least. And then they've got North Carolina and back-to-back -back games, North Carolina and Clemson. And yeah, this actually looks like a pretty decent schedule as well here. But again, they got their hard one out of the way first and looked really dominant in it. Miami, that passing attack is back. Got plenty of athletes. We'll see if they can continue it going. But for them, probably going to get to 4-0. Doing so far, so far so far at 2-0 and this season. Now, the most unpredictable, I would say, is the Texas Longhorn schedule because I think that, first, they're going to beat Wyoming. Wyoming's got a solid defense. Could get, make things kind of interesting. They did it against Texas Tech. But Baylor, I mean, Baylor, I don't know. They just, they had it against Utah. They had it. They just threw a terrible interception late. But then, after that, probably get to 4-0. Kansas at home. Oklahoma at a neutral site. Houston's not very good. BYU's not very good. Tech, Kansas State is. TCU can score a lot of points. Ohio State can, you know, prevent you from scoring points. And then Texas Tech in that very last game between these two in conference foes. I'm telling you, this right here has the most volatility of all these schedules. I think that the best teams are probably on Notre Dame's, but the most volatility is here because of all of the good offenses that they played down the stretch. I just, I don't know, man. But I do know that so far, these three teams, Texas, Miami, and Notre Dame, off to good starts. There's still a lot to get through here. But again, SEC a little bit down, these three powers a little bit up. We'll see how they finish. I also want to temper expectations too because these three teams are all actually kind of huddled next to each other right here. So we see in the 2024 class, the one that is mostly signed with their, all these kids right now are currently playing their senior year of football. Notre Dame's at 13, Miami's 16, and Texas is at 17. A couple five stars within there. But you see the fact that you come up here and it's still Georgia, Ohio State, Florida's a surprise. Alabama, Texas A&M, Florida State, Tennessee, Oklahoma, Michigan. And now remember here, if they're able to turn those players into solid players, may have to do a little bit more program building as opposed to, opposed to you know, program reloading like Alabama and all these big t programs do. But I do think that right now, they're off to good starts. Can they keep it going? We might be seeing a shifting of a tide. It will take some time. Those couple of wins, though, Alabama losing, Texas A&M losing, Notre Dame is off to a good start. That's kind of how you do it, one game at a time. So Miami, Notre Dame, Texas, all undefeated so far. A couple big wins by Texas and a couple big wins by Miami. You know, Notre Dame's had an easier schedule so far. But which one of those three traditional powers? Like I said, the last 17 seasons, no national championships between those three teams. The previous 19 before that, there was six. 
which one is most likely to get there to the next level. I think a lot of people are saying Texas. I think that Miami, I, I, I have a, a, a bias towards Miami, but I'm thinking they're going to be towards that level as well. Notre Dame has a brutal schedule. Ohio State, they got Clemson, they got USC. They've got a lot they got to get through. But you guys get in the comments and let me know what you guys think. All right, guys, that's it. Thank you so much for being here. Remember, please like, share, comment, subscribe. Do all that stuff. I really appreciate it. So for me, guys, I'll see you guys later. I am out.